Hey guys, how's it going? Tech Guy Charlie here. Welcome back to the channel. So I've just bought one of these brand new hot and cold dual inverter air conditioner from LG and I thought I'd make an in-depth review video and show you guys all of its features. And this model has pretty much every feature that you would want. It cools during summers and heats during winters. So it is also a heat pump. It's got a copper condenser, four-way swing, but one of the best features is that you can run this AC at lower capacity to save energy. I will show you how this works with power consumption test at each power mode later in the video. Oh, and by the way, I've also reviewed LG's SmartThinQ inverter ACs. So these ones come with Wi-Fi and the main advantage of these ones is that they connect to the internet and that allows you to control the AC via your phone. So if you are interested, you also might want to check out that review. I will put all the purchase links in the video description. And if you are watching this video in 2022 or 2023, I will update the links to the latest model. But in today's video, I will be reviewing this hot and cold air conditioner. These are also known as heat pumps. So this means it will heat your room up during winters and of course cool during summers. I will explain how this works later in the video, but the fact that it's got heating functionality totally eliminates the need of these traditional heaters. And not to mention that heat pumps are a lot more energy efficient compared to these coil based heaters. Now this is a 2 ton unit, but it's also available in 1 and 1.5 tons. But the features are exactly the same, so if you are buying the 1 or the 1.5 ton unit, you're still gonna find this video quite helpful. So the model that I have got is LS H24 VNXT1 and it consumes about 2060 watts when it's cooling and 2100 watts when it's heating. And that is actually 190 watts lower than what my 5 year old 1.5 ton AC consumes. So yeah, these newer ACs are more efficient. I mean this is a 2 ton unit, consumes less power than a 5 year old 1.5 ton unit. Yeah, go figure. And it's a 3 star rated unit and if you want to take a look at this label in more detail just pause the video. So this is the outdoor unit also known as the condensing unit and as you can see LG is using a 3 blade fan. And it's got a variable speed BLDC motor so the outdoor unit fan also adjusts its speed according to the heat load. Now taking a look at the back of the unit, we've got a nice thick condenser coil. It's a tube and fin copper condenser and this AC has two layers of condensing coils, one on the outside and the other one is on the inside. So this air conditioner has a lot of condenser surface area, which is great because lots of surface area is equal to better heat dissipation. And the condenser is black because it's got an anti-corrosive coating called Ocean Black Fin. If you have watched my older videos, you might have seen that on previous models, they use the coating called Gold Fin. So that has been replaced with Ocean Black. That's why the condenser is black, not gold. And they also have the anti-corrosion coating on the U-bends of the coil. So that's usually where the gas leaks out from. It's good to see that there is an anti-corrosive coating over there. And lastly, these newer models use R32 refrigerant instead of R410A. So more environment friendly. And I would say that this is one of the best outdoor units LG has ever built. The build quality is excellent and the unit feels solid. And this being a 2 ton unit is actually quite big and heavy. It weighs around 40 kilograms. And coming to the dimensions, the outdoor unit's width is about 87 centimeters. And it's about 37 centimeters deep if you include the fan grill. And finally, the height is about 64 centimeters. So it's a pretty big unit. The horizontal length of the indoor unit is about 100 centimeters. Its height is about 32 centimeters and it's about 21 and a half centimeters thick. And finally, let me show you all the accessories that are supplied with the air conditioner. First off, you have the connecting wire that connects the indoor and the outdoor unit, remote control, remote control holder, seasoning tape that you put on the line set. Then you have the AAA batteries for the remote and some screws. Oh, and this little thing is the drain pipe connector for the outdoor unit. It attaches to the unit at the bottom because when the air conditioner is running in heat mode, the outdoor coil gets cold and will get condensation. So this allows you to connect a drain pipe for the condensate water to drain. Zip ties, manual, installation manual, and three meters copper line set which connects the indoor and the outdoor unit together. So I guess that is pretty much all there is to it guys. 
uh, let me get the air conditioner installed and then i will show you the indoor unit and all of its features and do follow me on my social media accounts i will put all the links in the video description okay the new air conditioner is now installed the installation process took more than two hours since we had to take the old unit out relocate that to another room but overall the installation process was seamless and it's a pretty clean install and there is plenty of space available at the back of the unit so that cleaning and servicing becomes super easy oh and when you get your air conditioner installed please make sure to install these rubber pads these dampen the vibrations coming from the outdoor unit all right before we continue any further it's important to understand how these hot and cold air conditioners work so when you run your air conditioner in cool mode during summers, it will work like a regular air conditioner. The indoor unit, which is called the evaporator, blows ice cold air and the temperature of the air coming out of the indoor unit in cool mode is almost 0 degree Celsius. You can see that on the infrared thermometer. And the outdoor unit, which is called the condenser, blows hot air. And the temperature of the air coming out of the condenser is at about 54 degrees Celsius. So this is when the air conditioner is running in cool mode, the indoor unit blows cold and the outdoor unit blows hot. But when you run the air conditioner in the heat mode during winters, what happens is that the refrigeration cycle essentially reverses. And now the indoor unit becomes the condenser and it blows hot air. And the temperature of the air coming out of the indoor unit is at about 45 degrees Celsius. Yeah, that's nice and toasty. Love it. Meanwhile, the outdoor unit now becomes the evaporator. That means the outdoor unit will now blow cold air. And you can see that on the infrared thermometer, the air coming out of the outdoor unit is at about 10 degrees Celsius. And for some reason, a lot of people think that the compressor runs in reverse when you run the AC in the heat mode. Well, that is not true. The compressor runs normally. There is a reversing valve in the outdoor unit which reverses the flow of refrigerant. So the hot gas discharge from the compressor goes straight into the indoor unit coil instead of the outdoor unit's coil. So that is how you get heat from the indoor unit when it's running in heat mode. And that is all there is to it. Extremely simple working principle. There is no heating element. It's just an air conditioner running in reverse. So I hope that gives you a rough idea on how these hot and cold air conditioners work. And the heating performance is actually quite nice. We are only using about 300 watts to maintain 22 degrees Celsius room temperature. And I think the outside temperature is at about 13 degrees Celsius. You know what, let's check. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see. But yeah, the outside temperature is at 13.5. So nice and cold but the room is nice and warm. So we are maintaining 22 degrees Celsius and only using 300 watts. But do keep in mind that power consumption does rise to about 800 when the temperature falls and then it drops back down to 300. So the compressor speed increases when more heat is required and it decreases when less heat is required. And let's check the temperature of the air coming out of the vent. So if I use my infrared thermometer the air temperature is at about 31 degrees celsius i've seen the temperature go as high as 45 but right now it's at 32 33 degrees celsius and this is when the room temperature is at 22 only using 350 watts and i don't know how to put this but the heat coming off this ac feels a lot natural compared to what this thing generates so i do prefer heat pumps over the regular coil based heaters now to put the air conditioner in heat mode, you have to press the mode button until you see the heating icon. So that's the heating icon and now the air conditioner is in heat mode. And the maximum temperature that you can set in heat mode is 30 degrees Celsius. So that's the max. And one more thing, the active energy control does not work in heat mode. So 4 in 1 becomes non-functional. So everything is automatic. The only thing that you can control is fan speed and the temperature. And the lowest that you can set is again 16 degrees Celsius. I think it's gone into defrost mode. So yes, the heating performance of this air conditioner is excellent. And now I have to wait for about two to three months for the weather to warm up. And then we will do cooling test. All right, guys, now that it is proper summertime, 
let me go ahead and show you the cooling performance and the power consumption. So I'm gonna leave the temperature set at 24 degrees Celsius, which is also the default temperature of the AC. And I'm gonna show you two things, power consumption when the air conditioner is cooling the room down and then the power consumption once the room temperature is down to 24 degrees Celsius. And I've also bought this indoor outdoor thermometer. So at the time of doing this test, the outside temperature is 38.6 degrees Celsius and the room temperature is 29.6 and that one is showing 29.4 so roughly about the same and also one very important thing inverter acs start up gradually so unlike a non-inverter ac you don't have that sudden inrush of current and you can see that on the power meter the power consumption is rising slowly as the compressor speeds up and it takes about two minutes for this air conditioner to reach full power so when the air conditioner is running at its maximum power and it is cooling the room down, you can expect the power consumption to be somewhere around 2.2 kilowatts. Actually, it was 2.2 kilowatts. Now it has dropped down to 2 kilowatts. That's because the room temperature is already down to 26 degrees Celsius. And this thing is just cranking out ice cold air. Uh, let's take the temperature measurement and keep in mind this is on a 38 degrees celsius day so it is very very hot outside so the temperature of the air coming out of the ac vent is nearly zero degrees celsius you know what the air coming out is so cold i'm not able to put my hand in front of it it is just that cold and it's consuming about 2.1 kilowatts keep in mind this thing goes as high as 2.2 kilowatts but as the temperature drops the power consumption will also drop so that kind of power consumption won't really last that long and as the room temperature drops, so does the power consumption. And as you can see, the room is now down to temperature, so 24 degrees Celsius. And to maintain that 24 degrees Celsius, this air conditioner is only using 700 watts. But if you set the temperature to a more reasonable 26 degrees Celsius, you can expect the power consumption to be as low as 550 watts even during the daytime. So the air conditioner is maintaining 26 degrees Celsius even on a 38 degrees Celsius day. And that is actually quite impressive. Now one thing I want to do is take the temperature measurements. I want to see how cold it is blowing. So the temperature of the air coming out is at about 11.8 degrees Celsius. And this is exactly why I recommend setting the temperature to 26 degrees Celsius as opposed to 24 if you want to save on your electricity bill. You also might have noticed I've got two meters plugged in. So I've got the power guard plugged in, which is the meter that I usually use to demonstrate stuff. And I've got a second meter, which is the Wipro smart plug. So this is only for calibration purposes. I wanted to check if the mechometer is showing the correct reading or not. So right now the Wipro power meter is giving us a reading of 542 watts, which is actually correct. So that shows you the Meco power meter is quite accurate. Now, when the outside temperature isn't that high, for example, when you run the air conditioner during late evenings or at night, you can expect the power consumption to be as low as 300 watts. So right now, to maintain 24 degrees Celsius, it is only using 300 watts. And I've got plenty of heat load in my room, got three LED tubes running, I've got a desktop PC running, a TV running, and just to maintain that temperature, it's using only 300 watts. And right now the outside temperature is 27.6 degrees Celsius. And the funny thing is I can still feel that the AC is blowing cold air. So let's take the temperature measurements at 300 watts of power consumption. So the temperature of the grill is at about 10 degrees Celsius. I told you guys this thing is still blowing cold air. So yeah, that shows you how efficient these new inverter ACs really are. Now, speaking of power consumption, LG air conditioners have an amazing power saving feature called 4-in-1 convertible cooling. So this feature essentially allows you to decrease the air conditioner's tonnage. So this 2-ton air conditioner can run as a 1.5 ton, 1 ton and go as low as 0.75 tons. This works by manually applying a power limit on the compressor. So on the remote, you will see a button called 4-in-1. So you just press this. Now the AC will run at its 80% power or as a 1.5 ton unit. Press the button once again and now the AC will run as a 1 ton unit or at 60% power. And press it again 
and the AC will run at its 40% power or as a 0.75 ton AC. Awesome feature, right? So let me show you this feature in action. So when the air conditioner is running as a 2 ton unit or at maximum power, you can expect the power consumption to be somewhere around 2.2 kilowatts. Right now it's consuming 1180 watts. Now let's take the temperature of the grill. So check this out, I want to show you something. Check out the temperature of the ceiling, it's about 31 degrees celsius, focus. So yeah, the ceiling temperature is almost at 31 degrees and the temperature of the AC vent is nearly 0 degrees celsius. So the temperature of the air coming out of the AC vent is nearly 0 degrees celsius and that's a temperature difference of 31 degrees celsius. Man, this AC blows cold air. And this is even when the power has dropped down to 2 kilowatts. Alright, so now let's drop the power level to 80% and we will see the temperature of the air and the power consumption. Now, you have to wait about 2 to 3 minutes after pressing this button for the compressor to readjust. It's not instantaneous, so please do keep that in mind. Okay, so now the power level is down to 80%. That means this air conditioner is now running as a 1.5 ton unit. And the power consumption right now is 1700 watts, which is coincidentally also roughly the same as a 1.5 ton AC running at its maximum power. And you can see that from this little clip. Now, because this 1.5 ton air conditioner is a smart inverter AC, it also reports its current power consumption in the LG SmartThinQ app. And you can see the power consumption that this air conditioner is reporting is identical to the power consumption that my meter is showing. So that shows you this meter is quite accurate. And also let's check the temperature of the air coming out at 80% power at 1.5 tons. So here we go again. So the temperature of the air coming out of this AC is roughly about uh, 2.5 degrees celsius let's take it as 2.6 to somewhere between 3 degrees celsius and the temperature of the air coming out of the 1.5 ton ac at full power is about a degree higher at 3.6 degrees celsius that is within the margin of error so i would say it's almost identical this is because both of these are running at the same power level man it is quite interesting to compare both of these so now the AC is running at 60% of its original power. So for a 2 ton unit, that should be somewhere between 1 to 1.2 tons. And right now it's consuming 1250 watts. I hope you can see it on the camera. So let's take the temperature measurement and uh, we will see how cold it is blowing. So the temperature of the grill is at about 4.8 degrees Celsius. Yeah, plenty of cold air coming out even at such low power level and finally when you run this 2 ton air conditioner at 40% of its original power or as a 0.75 ton unit it will only consume about 860 watts so yeah this is on a 38.7 degrees celsius day so the outside temperature is quite warm and it is still blowing cold air let me actually take the temperature measurements and i'll show you so even at such low power level, the temperature of the air coming out is nearly 8.7 degrees Celsius. So yeah, it seems to have settled around 8.1. And if you remember, when we were running this AC at 100% power, the temperature of the air was nearly 0 degrees Celsius. So the power consumption and the temperature of the air coming out of the AC are inversely proportional. If the power consumption decreases, the temperature of the air will rise. If the power consumption increases, compressor runs faster, the air conditioner will blow cold air. And also one very important thing to note is that I have set the temperature of the AC to 16 degrees Celsius. So the set temperature of the AC is lower than that of the room temperature. That means the AC should be consuming more power and the compressor should be running faster. But the compressor is not speeding up. That is because we have manually set a power limit of 40% on the compressor. So that's why the air conditioner is pulling only 850 watts. So yeah, this is how the 4-in-1 convertible cooling works on LG Air conditioners it decreases the tonnage of the ac so that you can run these at a lower power level so a lot of people ask will the ac keep the room cool if i run it at 40 percent power well absolutely yes so you can already see that the room temperature is wait for it 25.6 degrees celsius so even on a 38 degrees celsius day 
running this AC at 40% power is definitely keeping the room cool. And because it is running at 40% power, it is only consuming 840 watts. So I have just shown you the four different power saving modes on this air conditioner. But what if it's really hot outside and if you want to quickly cool your room down? Well, there is a fifth power mode on this AC called Jet Mode. And this mode will run the AC at its 110% power. So on some newer models, this mode is called High Capacity. And on some models, it is called H Cool or Himalaya Cool. So you'll also notice that the fan will run at a slightly higher RPM than what you can set manually on the remote. Let me demonstrate. So we will turn this thing on and you will see PO appears on the display of the AC and on the remote. So jet mode is the fifth power mode on this AC and as you can see the power consumption has increased to 2.4 kilowatts. So this feature runs the AC at roughly about 10% higher capacity. So yes, it might be running at 2.2 tons. And let me tell you, when you turn on jet mode, the amount of air coming out is insane. I mean, just look at that. That is a lot of air coming out of this AC. So yes. You can use jet mode to quickly cool your room down but keep in mind this runs the AC at a higher power level. So yes this is another awesome feature of this AC but I don't really recommend using it because it puts unnecessary wear and tear on the compressor and on the fan. So we will switch back to the regular mode and set the temperature to 24 and let the air conditioner come back to its normal state and then I will continue explaining you guys all of its features. Remember at the starting of the video, I told you guys this air conditioner has four-way swing. So in addition to the standard vertical swing, you also have horizontal swing. So if I shine my light inside the air vent, you will be able to see that those inner fins also move. So if you pay close attention, you will be able to see those inner fins are also moving. So that is your automatic horizontal swing. And it's a six step vertical swing and five step horizontal swing. On the remote, you have the vertical swing option over here. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. So six step vertical swing. And as for the horizontal swing, you have five step control. So you press the middle button on the remote here to control the horizontal swing. So this switches off the horizontal swing. Press it again and the air will come out of the left side Press it again and it will adjust. So that's the second step. Third, the air will come out of the middle. Fourth, and finally fifth. So this lets you fully customize where you want the air to come out from. And there is also this comfort air button on the remote. Now what this does is that it adjusts the vertical swing to its topmost position or the bottommost position. So this is the topmost position. And if I press it again, it will come down to its bottom most position just like that and i also like the fact that the remote control also tells you the room temperature so there is a thermometer on the remote and you press the room temperature button and it will display your room temperature so right now the room temperature is 26 degrees celsius which is correct if i change this and press it now so that is the room temperature Plus, in addition to this, you also have a five-step fan speed control. A lot of ACs in the market only have three-step fan speed control, low, medium, and high, but this one has five. So right now, the fan is running at the lower settings. So this is the second speed, third speed, four, and five. And press the button again, and the fan will alternate between the low and the high speed. And press it again, and the fan is back to the lowest speed possible. And even at low speed, this fan blows a lot of air. So I'm standing at the other side of the room and the fan is running at low speed and there is still a fair bit of air coming out. So even at low fan speed, this air conditioner does blow a lot of air. Now coming to the noise levels, this air conditioner is very, very silent. It's running right now and you can't even hear the outdoor unit. By the way, the outdoor unit is right outside that window. And I've got my decibel meter here, so I'm going to show you the noise levels. So the fan speed is set to the lowest level possible and the room is down to temperature. So here's the noise levels. So yeah, at the low fan speed, you can expect about 28 to 30 decibels of noise levels coming from the indoor unit. And the outdoor unit is inaudible. You cannot even hear the compressor noise. 
Now at 50% fan, the noise levels do increase a little bit. So here's the decibel meter. So at medium fan speed, you can expect about 35 to 36 decibels of noise level, which is pretty okay. And finally, at the maximum fan speed, you can expect about 42 decibels of fan noise. And you can expect about 55 to 56 decibels worth of noise levels when it comes to the outdoor unit. Now, if I use the energy control feature and reduce the power down to 40%, the noise levels also go down. So when the AC is running at 40% power, you can expect about 49 decibels worth of noise level coming from the outdoor unit. Okay, so I know someone's gonna ask, how do you take the filter out for cleaning? Well, it's very easy. You see these tabs? All you have to do is pull on these tabs and that is pretty much all there is to it. So there are two tabs, one on the right and other one is on the left. Just pull and take the filter out. And to clean the filter, you can just wash it with plain water. Also, in addition to that filter, there is a second filter inside over here, which is over there. You can see it, that green thingy. So that is another filter, which you will need to take out and clean with plain water. And lastly, you will be able to see the ocean black coating on the edges of the coil right over here. So that is the anti-corrosive coating. It's nice to see that the coils on the indoor unit are also painted black on the edges. Reinstalling the filter is also very very easy. So the thicker side goes at the back and those clips align with those holes over there. And that's it. Now you just put the filter into position. And that's it. The filter is now installed and ready to be used. And lastly, the way you switch the display off is by pressing the light off button on the remote. So that will turn the display off. Very useful while sleeping at night. So guys, we are almost at the end of the video and let me go over a couple of things that I think LG should start including with their air conditioners. I'll start with the remote. The remote control does not have a backlight. I would really like to see LG include a backlight on their remote because when you are trying to change the temperature at night, you have to look at the display of the AC to check the temperature. That is because there's no backlight. And number two, I want LG to include a feature that lets you turn off this beeping sound. And it's kind of loud, so it's a little bit annoying, but yeah, I would like LG to include these two features, a backlight on the remote and a feature that lets you turn off the sound on the indoor unit. So yeah, other than these two things, this air conditioner is perfect. And finally, before we wrap this video up, I wanna show you my 24 hour power consumption. So to log the power consumption, I have been using both of these meters. I've been using the power guard and the Wipro smart meter. So I will put the Wipro smart meter screenshot right over here. So here we go. I've used the AC for about 12 hours and one minute in 24 hours. And my unit consumption count is 4.1 unit. So that is actually pretty low. So that shows you how efficient this air conditioner really is. And right now it's only consuming 300 watts to keep the room cool at 26 degrees Celsius. And this power consumption is without using any energy saving features. So I had the AC at 26 degrees Celsius all the time. So this is why I recommend that you set your AC at 26 degrees Celsius rather than 24 or 22 if you want to save electricity. So I guess that pretty much wraps it up for this video. Thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section down below and I'll try and answer them. So thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more air conditioning videos and I will see you guys in another video.